talking to you about this and maybe it was back at mu. Okay, so the fact that this equals cotangent is kind of some sort of maybe a little bit of a clue that maybe sine and cosine isn't like always the best way to go. So um, like if I'm headed towards cotangent, I might want to stick with this cotangent. So what I'm going to do first here is when I see these two together, this is one of those that jumps out at me. And again, that's me doing this, you know, like as a job. So I, I look at trig identities as a job, but I, I, so I, you'll get better at it, I promise. So secant is one over cosine. When I see those two together, I know that's going to equal one. And I'm going to kind of do baby steps with this one, because there is a lot in it. So this cancels here, so that becomes 1. So I'm going to go over here with that. Now, why that's good is because 1 over cotangent squared should be something we know, right? What's 1 over cotangent, or what's 1 plus cotangent squared? Sorry, I said that wrong. It's cosecant. So this becomes cosecant. That's just a fact on our sheet. So the top just became cosecant over secant. Now, obviously, that doesn't match quite yet. I want it to be cotangent. And right now, it probably feels a little strange to, like, um, to now go to the sine and cosine, but I think that's where we need to go. No, 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 no. What do you know, Sam? Cosecant's um, one over what? One over sine. Mm -hmm. Secant's one over cosine. So keep switch flip. So this flips. And so then I'm left with which is just cotangent square. function that we know is in this equation, what I prefer to, let's get it down to like a smaller number of these. So I'm going to leave sine and cosine in here, but I'm going to change these to their reciprocals.
So that way I'm down to, rather than having six trig functions in one problem, I'm down to four. Now Esther was asking me about this one. She wanted to switch the order of the subtraction because she didn't like the way things lined up. And although that's a great idea, we can't switch order of subtraction. If you wanted to switch the order, you'd want to switch it in the addition part. But uh, we don't need to do that. So I'm not going to, I mean, it worked fine for her. She got there, but um, don't switch the order of subtraction. Okay. So we're now going to FOIL. First outer, inner, last. Now, these are both over 1. So rather than writing them as two separate fractions, I'm just going to make them a single fraction. So this is going to be sine over cosine, if that's OK. So like, Kat, does that make sense to write it that way right away? Yes. Sine is on top of cosine? Yeah. OK. Now this one, sine's going to be on top of sine, minus. Just be careful with those. The positive and negatives. The word sign, when you're talking about the signs of numbers, it's really positive and negative. And then again, this one's going to be cosine over sine. We'll do number three here. Find that one? That might be a regular one. That would be a regular. 
It's cosy camp. Yeah. Oh, it's in okay. Cosy. So no. I got it because those were two identities we knew. Now, negative sine squared, I'm going to leave. I want to get to sine to the fourth. Now, cosecant squared is 1 over sine squared. Keep, switch, flip. So you're going to keep the first one, then flip it and multiply. That makes sense. All right. And I know, like, and, and if you miss, like, a little step, like, if you just miss something or you make a bad substitution that doesn't really work, then that's probably where you go wrong. So it's, it's easy to make little silly mistakes. So a few <laughs> Oh, you weren't here for, um, does someone want to share their salmon sheet with um, Kat so she can fill in the one through eight or whatever? So just like filling out, we spent time talking about what teaching those meant. Gotcha. That's going to be helpful. Uh -huh. Does anyone else still need a worksheet? Does everyone have one now? Yeah. 